thoughts about the words you are saying as you are saying them. Have you ever, during a conversation with someone, wondered, what is your face doing? What do your eyes look like? What is your body saying other than the words you are speaking? What I am asking you is, have you ever thought, am I talking to people? Or am I communicating with them? Master of Ceremonies, my dear friends, I have to think about that question all the time. You see, it is in my profession because I am a behavioral nutritionist. And I have to spend all my day talking to people and communicating with them. I have to listen, I have to understand them, and then I have to be able to help them. And you can't help someone without properly communicating. A year ago, while I was doing my master's degree, and I was doing research on behavior of humans. So during that research, I had to conduct interviews with university employees. And the interviews were very long and grueling. So I would have to sit with someone for a whole hour just talking to them. Can you imagine going up to university employees in the summer, asking them to talk to you for an hour? Uh -huh. Yeah, it was not easy. But I would go to them, and every time I speak to someone, I would tell them one thing in the beginning. I'd be like, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and then we can sit together, and you can ask me your nutrition questions, and I will help you with whatever you need. So, quid for quo, right? So I would talk to them, and I'd have these one-hour conversations, and then in the end, I'd ask them to come back two weeks later to my lab in my college where they would have to walk in the summer heat to get to the lab so that they would take, so I would conduct more tests and take measurements. So during these conversations, my advisor was very skeptical. She was like, you know what? You're never gonna get anyone to show up. You're never gonna get anyone to agree to talk to you for a whole hour. It's just never going to work. But I was very adamant that, you know what, it is going to work. So during this, I finished my interviews, and then I started calling people, asking them to come to the lab. And guess what? They all showed up. And every time a person would walk in, they would come in wearing a huge smile. I would think, why are they doing this? They all had red faces. They were all sweaty from walking in the sun. But they were smiling, like, Maryam, hi. And they'd come and sit with me, and to be honest, I conducted interviews with more than 140 people, so I didn't really remember all of them, but they all remembered me and they were all very excited to come and help me. And I thought to myself, why? Why would these random people actually care about a master's student's work enough to take the trouble to come see me? And I, you know, I found out the answer with this one guy. Now this one guy, I remember, remember him very specifically because when I went to speak to him, he was very shy. And I had to use every ounce of communication and behavioral knowledge that I possessed to get him to talk to me. So in the beginning, I had to be very initiating. I had to get him excited and ask him questions to get him just to open up and speak. And then once I managed to do that, I had to be very direct, asking him the questions that I needed, getting the answers that I wanted. And then towards the end of the meeting, I had to be very analytical and supportive. I had to help him understand his body because he had questions. I answered his questions. I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking what I was saying. I was just doing my work, doing my job. So when he came to the lab for the measurements, he came in and he said, Maryam, you know what? I don't have the time to be here, but I came just for you. And I said, why? Because why? <laughs> and then he said, because you changed my life. What did I do? I barely remember him. What did I do? And then he told me, he said, for years I've been suffering that I need to make very frequent trips to the toilet. And they would wake me up at night. So I'd be sleeping, I'd wake up literally every hour to use the toilet. He was like, I was suffering and I went to many doctors and nobody could figure out what the problem was. He's like, and I asked you a simple question. You read, you saw my readings and you told me you need to drink more water. And I asked you, OK, but I do drink water. And you said, no, you have to drink small sips throughout the day. Don't drink big amounts of water. He's like, I went home, and I tried it, 
and I sleep through the night. And you changed my life because now I'm no longer tired, I'm no longer exhausted, I'm no longer stressed out about sleep and water. And all of that because I took the time not to talk to him, not to get something out of him, but to communicate with him with three different styles of communication. My friends, effective communication, talking to people, the way that you speak, the way that you listen, the way your face looks, what you're doing with your hands, with your body, as you are talking to people, all of those things have an impact. They have an effect on people. You can't just talk the same way to everyone. You have to be a chameleon. You have to understand the person sitting in front of you and modify the way you're speaking to suit that person so that you can communicate properly. I don't have one style of communication. I am a chameleon. I have a hundred different styles and it depends entirely on the person in front of me. And I ask you now to think, are you talking to people or are you communicating with them? Are you sticking to one style or are you 